Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 83 of Level Grinding the Daily Hustle. I am Rachel Bastrash Bogan. I'm an entrepreneur here in Denver, Colorado, and I make these videos every single day so that you can see what the hustle looks like, what it looks like to build your business, what it looks like to go after your goals and achieve the dreams that you want to achieve. Today is a really good day. If you remember yesterday, I was talking about how tired I was. Um, and so today is much better. I actually got up closer to on time, not exactly on time, but much closer than I have in about a week. So I'm feeling really good. It is currently 9.30 and I am in the middle of breakfast, but I am all done with my morning routine and ready to jump into my wonder work block. So let's get the day started and let's go after our dreams and goals. I have about 20 more minutes in my wonder work block and no work done. Yeah, sometimes the hardest thing to do is do the work that means something to yourself. Um, it is a challenge to get started. It's a challenge to say to yourself, you know, this work really doesn't matter. Um, and the reality is that sometimes the work that you do for yourself is the most important work that you'll do. It's the work that will pay into the future. It's the work that will seed other projects. It will give you other tools, other learning. And so, yeah, um, part of the reason why I'm a little bit late is because I was finishing breakfast. I've also had some laundry on, but I'm gonna take the next 20 minutes and do something because I have to do something. And right now I'm staring at a blank page and that's the worst. Nobody likes a blank page because a blank page is hard work. It's much easier to work with something once you have it on paper and yeah, sometimes staring at a blank page is the worst. All right, I need to stop, put this project away, clean up leftovers of my very now late breakfast cleanup. So the good news is that I made a start and I have progress. I have something going on. The challenge is that I also kind of sort of worked through my break, which is not a problem. It's a good use for a break, except now I need to hang up some wet laundry and I really should be getting to work, but I have to get this off of my couch first. Okay, my first actual work block of the day, block one is wonder work right now. So block two starts at 11. It is only 15 past 11, which is fantastic. So what do I actually need to get on to do today? Um, I need to get an invoice out for a client and then I'm gonna move on to these other two clients. Um, so I'm gonna do this first and get that out the door. That way I can get paid and move on to these two guys. And the January money distribution that you see here, the distro, um, is simply something that I do uh, every two weeks once my husband gets paid. This is what goes into all of our revolving savings accounts. That goes back to my video about you need to know your numbers. So if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and take a look at that. Um, and I can explain more in detail about what a distribution actually does for us and more about revolving savings accounts. But yeah, that's just part of uh, financial money man management and that needs to get done I'm going to probably do that over my lunch break because that's been pending since Friday. It's annoying when your dog's schedule doesn't exactly work with your work schedule. It is now time for lunch. I'm going to be working on my distribution for this last paycheck from Robo. And while I'm doing that, I've got something uploading for my archive client. The beauty of this is that it can percolate while I'm eating. Um, yeah, I don't have to do too much otherwise than just monitor what it's doing. So that'll be a good thing to do over lunch. And once I get done with lunch, I have a break until 1.30. And depending upon what happens with that, I may actually go fold the load of laundry that I did earlier today. I am back at it after lunch and after my lunch break, I was able to get all of my laundry done. So that feels really good. This is one reason why I absolutely love having breaks in my work day. They only work though if I actually stay on schedule. So it's nice to be getting back into this and really making a point of staying on target. Um, right now I have my archive project uploading over there. <laughs> it is difficult doing this backwards sometimes. So that is percolating in the background. Um, and for a second, I wanted to take a moment and explain revolving savings accounts. Uh, these are a really nice tool to use in conjunction with a budget. And since we talked about knowing your numbers a few weeks ago, I thought I might as well follow that up with revolving savings account information. 
So first off, let's answer the question, what is a revolving savings account? A revolving savings account exists in your regular savings account. It's not something separate. It's not something your bank sets up. It's something that you designate. Now, you might have seen me working in my spreadsheet that shows what is going into my different revolving savings account each month. Basically, it is a column that simply lists out what are my monthly payments going in. And then later on, depending upon what this account is revolving around, all of that stuff comes out. All right, let me explain it this way. If you have something that you are currently paying monthly, let's say it is your auto insurance, but if you paid it in one lump sum every six months, I will put this in here, monthly, 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 all right? And this is much more, it is greater than uh, the actual payment that would be every six months. So let's say if you paid $80 a month, that would be at the end of six months times six. Uh, somebody help me with my math. That would be, I believe, $480 total over those six months. But what if, if you paid instead in one lump sum, you were able to get that for 420 how do you then save the correct amount to be able to pay this in one lump sum, but instead of it coming all out of one paycheck and you having to figure out how in the world do I actually pay all of this? Well, the answer is a revolving savings account. Rather than paying the account person over at your auto insurance, you pay yourself. In this question, 42 is only $60 a month, right? 42 divided by six, uh, I think so. To six months so you're paying yourself those monthly payments you're putting them away in a savings account and at the end of six months you're going to be able to write the check for that 420 rather than spending 480 over the course of six months now my husband and i use this system for a lot of different things we use it for our auto insurance we use it for our yearly renters insurance for our costco payments um you know like our, our costco membership uh, we also use it for other things um such as our auto and uh in not insurance, our auto registration. So these are all things that save up over time. And then when the bill comes due, we just take it out of the savings account and put it towards the thing that's supposed to do. And this is a really big budget saver, especially if you are somebody who is on a six month payment, but you're not doing a revolving savings account. So when that bill comes due, you have to find $420 in that month's uh, paychecks. And that's often very, very difficult to do. So if you're paying yourself instead of the auto insurance company, you're able to save all that money up and get it ready in time for that six month payment. And often if you pay things in larger uh, chunks, be that yearly or be that every six months, you're gonna pay a lot less than if you paid your monthly fee. So this is a really great way of saving money. All right, now that I've explained a little bit about revolving savings accounts, it's time to get on to my other client work. It is five past three. That means it is time to go into my next rest period, which is fabulous because I have a phone call with another potential person who wants some coaching. So I'm gonna follow up with her. She called me earlier. I'm gonna do this in my break. Um, currently moving right along with Prov and with my client named Drew, uh, which is fantastic. Both of those are going along, so I'll be able to knock both of these off of my list. Um, and then I have another uh, invoice I need to write. I completely forgot about this one. So moving right along today, I am, yeah, good work day. Okay, so I just got off the phone. Um, she wasn't available right now, so I'm going to leave my, my telephone on, uh, what is it? ringing. I normally keep it in do not disturb, which means that when people like Antoinette call me, I don't notice it until I look at my phone, which is not always conducive, but it definitely is a great way to get work done. So if you're somebody who has like bajillion notifications going off, put it in do not disturb and actually like get some work done rather than being distracted by Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and phone calls and emails. Like just put it in do not disturb. It's a whole lot easier. But that also means that I've got about 20 minutes to do whatever I want and breathe, which that is one of the things that I love about having rest breaks, but because I rarely take them, um, I kind of don't know what to do with this one. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I need to make bread. So I'm going to use this mix from Bob's Red Mill. I don't know if I've made this before, um, but Robo and I are planning on having grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup later on this week. And rather than buy bread, it was one of those things where it's like, I've got a mix hanging around in my flour stash. So I'm going to give this a whirl. We'll see how it comes out. 
Um, yeah, this is how I'm gonna spend my break. I need to get it started because it needs to rise, and so, yeah. I haven't made bread in a really long time. I miss making bread. Okay, so bread baking's taking a little bit longer than it should have. Uh, I killed my yeast the first time, so I had to kind of start over with proofing my yeast, but that's okay, because I know how to fix that problem, so now it has finally bubbled up for enough, and I'm about to mix up the rest of this dough, move forward, get back to work. Finally, bread is rising. And now that it is, oh good grief, well past my break, <laughs> let's get back to work. Alrighty, time to close out tasks. I am just about done for the day. So right now I'm on my way upstairs to go chat with my neighbor. She has a tech problem and this is the cool thing about being friends and also being able to help people. Sometimes you get to answer questions in your own, bu in your own building. So I'm back from trying to help out my neighbor. And regrettably, I couldn't do much. We spent probably like an hour going around and around. I tried every single media trick that I know to try and solve the problem, but it's not working. So she's gonna keep hunting and keep working. She might have to do redo some work. So she's gonna let me know. I offered to do a couple of things for her to help her with that. She'll let me know. It's one of those things like when you're so frustrated, you can't think straight. And so she's just going to put it away for a while and take a break and go from there. So in the meantime, Robo finished out my bread and look at this. This, this looks really good. And you can see like from the, from the, this was a big, big slice and now it's mostly gone. So yeah, Bob's Red Mill takes the cake, takes the bread. It is 10 o'clock at night. I'm taking the dog out for his evening walk. You can see him causing me to jiggle my phone all over the place. Uh, today has been a really good day hustling. I'm kind of sorry that I couldn't help my neighbor with her tech problem, so it's kind of frustrating. Um, but for the other things that I was doing today, sending out invoices, tracking down projects, um, actually cool things, lining up some for the beginning of spring, early summer. Um, one of my clients is already saying, hey, I know that I'm going to have these projects coming. I want to get your help on them. Uh, you just need to nail down dates. So it's exciting to see some stuff already shaping up in the future um, and I got some other people that I need to talk to people that I started conversations with back in December and I need to finish those out and kind of just continuing this push forward and making sure that I am doing everything that I possibly can to move life forward so things that move forward today were two of my clients I got a lot of work done for them uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be able to head into all my meetings really strong and I'm looking forward to those so that's all fantastic and yeah I think the theme today was just moving, like forward momentum, keeping things going, keeping the momentum. And as you are trying to move your life forward, maintaining momentum is always the challenge. It's really easy to feel like you get derailed after a day, especially a day that doesn't go right. And the biggest thing is to remember that you can always start over tomorrow. Um, if there's one of my favorite quotes from Anna Green Gables, it is her saying about how tomorrow is a new day with no mistakes in it. And it's something that I like to think about, especially when I have a rough day. Um, not that today was a rough day, but if you had a rough day, I want you to remember tomorrow is a new day and has no mistakes in it and so that is your promise and that is your goal is to use each day to the best that you can regardless of what you did yesterday. This is the end of today's video. I'm going to see you all tomorrow. Um, if you like the video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed go ahead and subscribe and if you like this video share it with a friend of yours who you think needs this message. I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.